They say it takes a grown man to admit when they're wrong. And boy, I was wrong. I was wrong this season. Kenny Pickett was and is not the best quarterback for this team. Kenny Pickett was slash is not the best quarterback for the 2023 Steelers. Mason Rudolph is that guy. Mason Rudolph is the answer. End of story. He starts next week. And if we win next week and we get the help that we need, he starts for the rest of the playoffs. End of story. No questions. Period. This offense had back-to-back -back games of 30-plus points. This offense had back-to-back -back games of 270-plus passing yards. Pickens, our star receiver that we've been begging, the fans have been clamoring for to get the ball more. Pickens had back-to-back -back games of 100-plus yards. That impact that we know that he can deliver. That's what, that's what Pickens has been doing in these last two games. Run game, awesome. We had a buck 45, I think it was. We set a, was it a Steeler record? It was some type of record we set in the first half where we had a buck 45 on the ground with Najee and Jalen Warren. No turnovers either. So we're talking about this high ceiling of this offense where we're putting up 30 plus points and all the splash, the electric play, but we're also not turning the ball over. Well, we tried. A couple players tried, but they weren't able to, luckily. Luckily, thank God. But Mason, man. He's the story, dude. The Mason Rudolph effect. I don't have his final stat line. He was... No, I do, actually. Because I typed this in before he threw that last slant pass to uh, Pickens. 17 of 23 was 250, but ended up with 18 of 24. What, what's the math on that? 18 of 24, that's like, what, 80 plus percent? 85 percent? 270? 270 plus passing yards? That's over 10 yards attempt. That might even be over 11 yards in attempt. So shout out to Mason, man. He's QB1 for the 2023 Steelers. Rest of the season, not even a question. And we can have conversations about 2024. We can later in the stream probably because I was over at my buddies for the game for like the first three quarters. Then I had to drive back over, hop on this stream for the post game. But there were conversations of like, all right, what do we do? Kenny, Mason. What's the competition? Do you re-sign a guy in free agency? Do you draft guys? We were talking all about that, and I'm sure you guys will have some comments on it, so we'll talk about it a little bit later in the stream, but uh, it's not even a debate. Mason Rudolph is QB1. He's the best quarterback for the Steelers right now. I was wrong. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Sue me. But it, I, I'm – very happy to be wrong. I've never been more glad to be wrong because it looks like we have a good offense. We have a quarterback that is playing really good right now that is in control of this offense and is in command. And that just so happens to be Mason Rudolph. I like a lot of people. Let's just be real. A lot of people didn't think Mason was the best guy for the job on this roster. Some people did. I do got to give credit to some people, but I, I don't think everyone was on that energy going back to the preseason and heading into 2023 like that. I'll take it, though. I hope it's not too little too late. I pray to God it's not too little too late. Can we get that help that we need in the last week of the season to make these playoffs? Because I think if we get in, we're a team to be reckoned with. You can't tell me we're not. We're going to get healthy on defense. And, like, there were some lapses with our defense in this game. We all witnessed that. But they put a lid on it. They did what they had to do to get us out of that stadium with a win. But we're only going to be getting healthier. We're going to get Minka back. We'd get Casey back for the playoffs. Miles Jack would have more games under his belt at inside linebacker. Hopefully, Atlanta Roberts gets back. You know we got JPJ playing top notch over there in his rookie season as our CB1. Levi Wallace, not terrible. I mean, we played a lot of zone. And to Geno's credit, to some of their receivers' credit, they were, Gino was able to stay back in the pocket there and find his guys in between the zones throughout most of the game. Like We were getting carved up, but we did put the lid on it and didn't give up the big play like we did last week against the Bengals with T. Higgins. And that all contributed to us winning because it was just an all-around great performance. It was complimentary football. Offense was balling out. Defense stepped up when needed. It wasn't pretty on defense, but 
They still got it done. The only problem with today was these early games. We got absolutely no help in the early games. It was just an abomination all around. And I thought we were going to get help. I thought we were going to be going into this 4 o'clock Steelers-Seahawks game with a chance to control our own destiny. I was looking so forward to that. But unfortunately, we didn't. We're going to need that help next week. You look at these games. Bill's Patriots. I, I could not believe what I saw. Josh Allen had a terrible game. He was trash. His first six passes, he went 0 for on. And then I look up. It's like halftime. I think he went like 7 for 20 and a pick. I'm thinking to myself, okay, you mean to tell me Josh Allen's going to have a bad game against the Patriots and the Pats are going to return a kick to the house first play of the game. Patriots should be winning that one, right? Josh Allen plays bad. Patriots get a special teams touchdown. But no, I, I look up at halftime and the Bills are up 20 to 7. I think the Patriots got it close to like 20 to 14. But you've got to be kidding me. If if Z Zappy doesn't throw all those picks, the Patriots get out of that with a dub. And this is what makes me most mad. I, I don't know if I've ever I ever get more mad than when the Steelers have booted themselves out of the playoffs, or at least where they need help to get into the playoffs. And I'm relying on scrub teams to win to get us back in to the dance. I don't think I'm ever more mad than that. Cause I, I, I get really mad at like teams like the Patriots or like the Carolina Panthers. I'm like, come on, bro. You got Bryce young, the number one pick. You mean to tell me he can't outplay CJ Beathard and the Jaguars in just one game. You drafted him number one overall for a reason. So that one didn't go in our direction. Jaguars won that. Bills won against the Patriots. Vegas versus the Colts. That was uh, closer than some of the others. I was holding out hope, but the Colts ended up closing it in the fourth quarter. But I was like, where's Vegas? You just came off that really nice win against the Chiefs. Everyone's talking you guys up. Sleeper even for the AFC West if the Chiefs lose out, you know? Big sleeper team. Give Antonio Pierce the contract right now. And then you lose to the Colts like that. Although, I don't know if I should be talking much back because we lost to the Colts just a few weeks ago. But still, it makes me mad, man. It, it makes me mad. Like, why couldn't one of these four games go on our way? Now, Titans versus Houston, I figured Houston was going to win because C.J. Stroud came back and Will Levis sucks. So that was one I didn't really mark on my uh, board as – a victory, at least towards the Steelers' favor. I, I was not leaning on that one. I figured the Texans were going to win. Uh, but now it looks like, here's what we need. You guys tell me if I'm wrong on this. This is what I've gathered thus far. We just need the Bills to lose against the Dolphins or the Jaguars to lose against the Titans. And I think both those teams, the Bills and the Jaguars, are on the road for those respective games. So that's not far-fetched. The Miami-Buffalo game, that's for the division. You know that's going to be a tough battle. And then Jaguars on the road, what's going to happen with Lawrence? Is he going to be back? Is he going to be healthy from that AC joint sprain in his shoulder? Even if he does come back, he'll probably still be feeling the effects. And he wasn't even playing that good before they sat him. And then if you're going with Beathard, it's like, okay, you got this dude in his second game, more tapes out there on him in the Jaguar system. On the road against the Titans, Mike Vrabel. I mean, neither of those are that far-fetched, and we only need one of them to happen. It could be worse. Like, last year was worse for us. We needed the Jets to beat the Dolphins. We needed the Jets with Joe Flacco. Why couldn't the Joe Browns Joe Flacco show up last year for us when we actually needed him for the Steelers to get in the playoffs? Why couldn't that Joe Flacco have showed up? Instead, we got crappy Jets Joe Flacco against the Dolphins. They couldn't even put up more than six points. Yeah, Dolphins end up winning. We got booted. But, yeah, I think we got we got life. We got hope with those two games. Those, those are the two that we need help with. Who's in the chat, man? What are you guys saying? What's popping? That was a good win, man. That was a great win. I think it played out how I expected, to be honest with you. I, I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back. And we, and we got the two jersey on. We still got the two jersey. We got the Mason jersey. You guys already know the tags are off. We keeping it. We rocking with it the rest of the season. And see what we're just gonna see what happens. Let's see if we can ride this wave. But um, I think it did play out how I expected. We were gonna run the ball. The Seattle run defense is not good. Najee and Jalen had their way. And then Mason was gonna play good. 
he was going to be what we needed him to be and more though. That's, that's the difference. I got to say, whenever you talk about that with Kenny, like Kenny needs to be with this offense needs him to be Mason needs to be with this offense needs him to be Mason gives us more X factor, man. He gives us more downfield throws. He gives us more pop. I can't be the only one seeing that, right? 18 of 24, 270. Like, he was good, man. Basically, just parlayed what he did against Cincy into this one. He carried that over. He played great. Played really good. But, yeah, we were clean on offense, running the ball. Mason was taking his shots. And then on defense, we kept the lid on it. We were steady with it. We made the Seahawks execute basically every series they had the ball on offense. And they got us a couple times with some touchdowns, but, hey, they didn't score more points than us at the end of the day. That's what that's what counts. And we got the turnover. We got the big turnover. And uh, that put us in position and put it up two scores. And that was pretty much it. We still had to make plays down the stretch, uh, particularly on offense, because the Seahawks got down the field, kicked their field goal. But we had the chance, two minutes, ball, close out the game, and we did. And Tomlin had Mason throwing it. He had him throwing it with the Seahawks only having two timeouts, two minutes left. We recovered that onside kick. I think that goes to show you how much faith they got in number two right now. What they think about him as being our QB1. We threw it. Slam past the pickings. First down. Game's pretty much over at that point. Played out to be a good game. And Steelers did everything they needed to do to win the game, if that makes sense. Like, that was literally the formula. That was uh, That's what I was talking about heading into this. Tomlin... Steelers brass, they must be listening to the streams. They must be listening to the podcast. Uh, phew. Okay. Lomac 13 says Mason one, Kenny two. Mitch booted. Well, we're not going to cut Mitch middle of the season. I'm assuming you're talking for next year. Squares, who you want starting Deke, number two or number eight? Going back to what I said in the intro, it's number two. It's not even a question to me. It's not even a question. It's not. He's earned himself next week. He's earned himself the playoffs. He's earned himself the rest of the 2023 season, whatever that just so happens to be. And hopefully it is a playoff run. Hopefully it is. It's a good comment, too. D-Max, kudos to Mason standing tall in the pocket. He did. You could tell from the first couple series he was not going to be rattled by that Seattle crowd or being on the road. But actually, we got we to gotta shout out Steeler Nation because – I don't know if I want to say a full-fledged takeover, but there are a lot of Steeler fans in that Seahawks stadium. There are a lot of Steeler fans. And that Seattle fan base is monikered the 12th man. Like, they got a good, solid support from their own fan. You know what I mean? They got their own crew, but we were there. We were heavy out there. So shout out to Steeler Nation. But, yeah, Mason looked calm. There was times where he took the snap. And also credit to our old line for blocking for him. But he, dude, he just stood in the pocket. Calm and cool like a cucumber. Like, didn't even move. It was like like a statue. Like, yeah, it's cool. Like, we got bodies flying around all over the place. We got we got a little pressure, like, around. But no, I'm cool just right here. And then deliver a strike. would go through his reads. The pass that was money, money was the second to last one to Pickens. The last one to Pickens was that slant to like close out the game on the final drive. But that second to last drive where, bro, like he gave the little pump fake. He stood tall in the pocket for a while. And like the pressure was there. There were a bunch of Seahawks guys. It was closing in on him. He delivered the strike down the field. Credit to Pickens for making the catch, the rollover. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Uh, M. Patterson, 36, says Mason might be the greatest athlete ever. This is the crazy part about the Mason talk right now. And even hearing some of the broadcasters before the game and the way that they were talking about Mason, it's like if you had a time machine and went back to 2019, this is not how we were talking about Mason. Not at all. We were calling him like Mr. Safe, Mr. Checkdown. But now... You got dudes talking about his arm strength. He's going to be taking the shots down the field. He's going to stand tall in the pocket. He's got all this talent coming out of Oklahoma State. I didn't view Mason like that in 2019. I think we knew he had some of that talent. He just wouldn't put it on display. 
But now he is. And it looks good. It looks like QB1. It looks like a guy that knows how to run the offense that we could trust. So, yeah. Shout out to him, man. Shout out to him. Like, you got to have mental toughness to go through everything he's gone through with his Steeler career. And to be at this point at, you know, 28 years old, you started out this season as the third stringer. Now we're relying on you for these last several games. You got to have some mental toughness to, to deliver in those moments. And he has been delivering. Uh, Jay Brown Steeler says, I have to be honest. Mason isn't the guy either. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> Listen, dude. Here, oh, All right. So back to what I was saying at the beginning. Here was the conversation we were having at my buddy's place. Me and a bunch of my friends. Like, okay, what do we do here? Mason versus Kenny. And we all agree after how this one played out, you stick with Mason for the rest of the season. But going into next year, you know I'm not writing off Kenny. You guys know that. I've said that. But at the same time, if Mason keeps putting up these performances that are better than anything that Kenny has done, why wouldn't you be bringing him back to at least make it a competition? Now, it all depends on how week 18 goes and if we get our luck from week 18 and get into the playoffs and who knows, like there, there is still a season to be had here. There's still more tape to be had. There's still more of a sample size to look at. But as of right now, Mason has earned himself. If we're going to stick with Kenny, we're going to cut Mitch, potentially draft a guy or bring in like a free agency fringe guy. Like, a, you know what I mean? Like a backup. If we're going to do that, like Mason has at least earned himself a right to compete with Kenny and whoever you whoever else you bring in for QB one to be the Steelers starting quarterback for 2024. Like that's not even up for debate, in my opinion. Like, why wouldn't you do that? If you're willing to go with Kenny into next year, why wouldn't you keep Mason around to compete with him? Why would you not? Mason just had back-to-back -back awesome games. Back-to-back -back games from start to finish that I would argue uh, were better than anything Kenny has put out there in the last two years. Mason just delivered in back-to-back -back games the best quarterback play we've seen in the last two seasons. So why wouldn't you bring him back to compete for QB1? Why not? <laughs> Uh, obviously, we're seeing the arm talents there. Obviously, we're seeing the command is there. Obviously, we're seeing the leaderships there, too. I think it'd be really foolish to not have Mason in the mix. If he wants to come back, I don't know what energy he's going to be type. Of, he's going to be on. Is he going to be the type to say, oh, man, like, screw you guys. I'm going somewhere else. I think we're going to be the only team, though, that would give him the opportunity to be QB1. I don't know if any other team will give him that chance to be the starter. They may think of him more as like okay you could be our solid backup but here if we keep it in house with kenny and like i said draft the guy at some point i don't think we we should be thinking first or second round you'd be thinking third fourth around and on just to bring in a guy for depth so if that's the case you have kenny you bring in veteran guy or late draft pick type of guy mason should be in that quarterback room competing for qb1 I, I don't even think it's a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're getting some Mason cool comments here. Yep. Yep, he's not over that. He is not over that. And I'll tell you what, man. I had this thought. If I'm talking about this Steelers team being like, what, 10 and 5 heading into this game, if Kenny would have stayed healthy... What would we be if we would have started the season off with Mason Rudolph? Would we be undefeated? Holy. Bro, he's playing good. I'm I'm truly not thinking that I'm overreacting right now. I don't. He's playing like legitimately good. Like really good. And some people thought he was going to 
come back down to earth in this game. I'd, I'd argue, based off the circumstances, he might have played better in this one. On the road, second game starting, where, you know, all the buzz, all the hype's already out there on you, some tapes out there on you, against a better team in Seattle, who they're playing for their playoff lives, better defense in Seattle versus Cincy. He delivered that. He just didn't have the touchdowns. But I'm going to keep the same energy. I was talking about with Kenny Pickett where everyone would be complaining about Kenny. Like, where's his touchdowns? Where's his touchdowns? I'm not going to hold it against the quarterback when we run it in from like 10 or 20 yards out. Why would you hold it against the quarterback? What did the offense look like? How did the quarterback command the offense? And I think Mason's been doing that really good these last two games. <clears throat> True Brock says the difference is the defense has time to rest. Yep. Yeah, because even if we're not scoring touchdowns every every time, we're sustaining long drives, like really long ones. And the defense has had time to rest. And we need that with some of the injuries we got. Like we'll take any type of little advantage we can get on the defensive end. Uh, T. Williams, 421. Uh, it's a good question. D Does T.J. Watt win the depoy? We all know he should, but does he? Uh, yeah, he should. Will he? I don't know because even though he has better stats than both Miles Garrett and Michael Parsons pretty much across the board, across the board in all major categories, uh, I think Miles Garrett's the favorite now. Michael Parsons is favorited higher than TJ Watt. So I don't know if he will. If you're going to give my prediction on what the voters do. My hands are up in the air on that. But based off of how they're grading it and how all of a sudden this pressure stat has become such such an impactful category for the voting, pressures, we're, we're talking about pressures. We're talking about pressures. TJ had a few of those this game, right? That should help him in that stat. Even though this is my point with the pressure, it's such a gray area stat. Like, Who's keeping track of these anyway? What are what is a pressure and what what makes it good? That's the other thing. Like, bro, TJ had a pressure on Geno Smith and he whiffed Geno Smith. I would say it was a bad play on TJ Watt because he whiffed Geno. He could have had an easy sack. Geno evaded TJ and then threw the ball down the field. Is that going to be counted as a pressure for TJ Watt? That wasn't like that good of a play. Pressures are, in my opinion, they're just like it's like a what if gray stat. But TJ had a few of them in this game. So maybe maybe that'll help his deep boy case. I don't know. Because now some of these voters and some of the national media analysts are caring more about pressures than stuff like sacks and tackles for loss and actual stats that are tangible, you know? But yes, TJ Watt should win the deep boy. Absolutely. Uh, we got T. Williams, 421, tuning in from the UK. Thanks, bro. <laughs> uh, P. Maravilla, JPJ held DK to another touchdown. Yeah, I think JP had a good game. I think some of the stuff that he was letting up was just we were in zone, and he was off coverage a little bit. I think he had a solid game. M. Patterson, 36. It says, national media doesn't know ball. This is why I only watch Big Deep News. Shout out. All right, I, ne I need to uh, respond to this comment now, too. I probably got two more things before I roll out of here. Um, Corey Hartz, we've come to have the best one-two bunch at RB. So going back to what I said at the beginning, it takes a real man to admit when they're wrong, to admit their mistakes. Were my Najee Harris takes trash this year? I think they were. Even in the middle of this game, I was like, bro, I don't even know if Najee's on the team next year. It was probably like in the first quarter, halfway through the first quarter. I was like, ah, I don't even know, man. Like, he just doesn't give the pop that Jalen brings. And maybe we could get another big body like Najee, but at least can take it up the field at a better clip. Because Najee's good for, you know, that four, five, six yards. Sometimes he'll carry some dudes for a 10, 11, 12-yard gain but he doesn't have that next level type of stuff. 
But then as you see the game plays out, if Najee and Jalen are running like that, they're the perfect one-two punch that the Steelers need. The perfect Steelers football one-two running back tandem. It's absolutely perfect. You got to love Jalen Warren. Stiff arm. Was that Weatherspoon? The first stiff arm? Stiff arm, another dude. I think it was a linebacker later in the game. But yeah, bro. The combined stats with them, Najee had over 100 yards, 27 carries, 122. Jalen, 13, 75, one touchdown. Najee had two touchdowns running. And then Jalen had his, you know, 23 coming out the backfield in the receiving game. So he had 30, had a total of 100 yards both rushing and receiving, then Najee had 122 on the ground. You can't beat that, bro. And then combined with the Mason, 274 on 24 attempts, that's an offense right there. That's an offense you can win with. Absolutely an offense you can win with. Now, the defense, yeah, it needs some work, but we're going to be getting healthy. If we could just sneak in, bro, if we can just get the help that we need, watch out. But, yeah, I think I got to own up to my Najee takes, too. Because he's about to have a 1,000 yards on the year. That's There'll be three straight 1,000-yard seasons for Najee. Somehow. Somehow, some way. Like, midway through these last two years, you're wondering, like, bro, is, is Najee even going to hit, like, six or 700 on the ground this year? And then he heats up as the weather gets colder. So, yeah, I think uh, I got to own up to that one. But last thing I want to talk about, uh, what's Deontay Johnson doing, bro? I couldn't even believe my eyes when he fumbled that going out of bounds. He made an awesome catch, a little combat catch, and then runs it to the sidelines. I think he got the first down. I'm like, okay, cool. And then he just tosses the ball to the defender. I'm like, bro, I haven't seen this since Gunnar Olszewski. I thought we got that type of stuff off the team. But Deontay is known for some of his own ball security issues, and that popped up there. And thank God he had his foot barely on the line. I, I couldn't believe. It. I was just, I was just like, I thought I saw it all. Like I'm an avid football watcher. Ever since you know I was back in fifth or sixth grade, I I watch football regularly, consistently. See a lot of games. See a lot of things happen. I was like, I don't know if I've ever seen this one. I don't know if I've ever seen this one. Like you make the catch, you have complete control of it. You make some play, you you make you make a couple football moves, you're heading upfield, and then as you're going out of bounds, you just toss it back inbounds to the defender. Like we saw the Deshaun Jackson, you know, wherever he's heading to the end zone and prematurely celebrates, throws the ball behind him. We've seen that. Like that, that's even a little bit more understandable than just as you're going out of bounds with control of the ball, coughing it up to the defender. I could not believe it. <laughs> Thank God he stepped out of bounds before he officially gave the ball away like that. Thank God. But, man. And then Pickens almost did it, too. Pickens almost did it. But we got blessed on this. Got blessed. But overall, offense, good. We got splash. We got legit deep ball ability with Mason. We got home run ability in the backfield i know it's not nausea it's not a nausea type of thing but Jalen warren he's got the pop he could take he could take runs the distance like you combine that with just the ability we're able to keep it clean and not to turn the ball over like looks good man it looks really good and we that, let's shout out herbie before i sign off here yep p maravilla shout out to nick herbie I thought he'd have more impact for the Steelers this season, but I just don't think he's out there enough. It is what it is. He's young. He's a rookie. We'll definitely be seeing more from him going forward. Uh, yeah, I do. I got the Mason. I do got the Mason jersey on. I absolutely got the Mason jersey on. But yeah, bro, the way he's playing, like, it's it should be a serious conversation about him being our 2024 QB1. Leave it as an open competition between him and Kenny. Like, whatever it is, like, he should be in the running. I'm saying right now, let's see how this season plays out. And then you could be having some different conversations, or those conversations could be having some different nuance added to them. We'll see. We got one more game left in the regular season against hopefully some of the Ravens' backups. 
Although at the same time, with how the Steelers are playing, we repeat what we just did these last two weeks. We can play with anyone, man. We can definitely play with anyone. Yeah, let's see how it goes, though. Let's see how Mason looks week 18 on the road, Baltimore. And if we get in the dance, how's he look in the dance? Uh, actually, you know what? One more. One, one, one more little thing. One more little segment I guess I could talk about here. Because Shaddy brings up Roe be choking so much. Yeah, he could have had that pick, mistimed it. But he's one of them. And, like, we should shout out the unsung guys. You know, some of these practice squad dudes that we called up that are making plays. Eric Rowe. He had 10 total tackles. Had a tackle for loss in there. Almost had a pick. Miles Killebrew had to get out there a little bit. Shout out to him. We just did an interview with him last week. Um, Nick Kerbrig, we already talked about him. We had, uh, no, there's one more name I'm missing. Miles Jack. Yeah, Miles Jack. Eight total tackles. How about this? Devin Bush, 17 total tackles. If you just looked at that, you might you might think that he had a good game. But, no, nah, there's a reason we were able to run the ball pretty well. And uh, I think a lot of that we could thank to Devin Bush for him being out there. But, all right, I'm out of here, guys. Enjoy your New Year's. I forgot to say, Happy New Year's to everyone. This is, this is a great way for Steeler Nation to bring in the New Year with this type of dub. But uh, stay chilling. I will be back tomorrow. 11.30 a.m. I will be locked in. I will be laser focused. And we'll talk more ball. We'll talk more Steelers. Um, but all right, I'll see you guys then. Again, Happy New Year. Here we go, Steelers. And peace.